Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clarity 16.0.2, Supportability and Feature Training. My name is Dave Sprague, and in this session, we are going to be covering a few of the, actually all of the staffing updates that are available in this release. So what's new? Let's start with our continued focus on enterprise um, staffing. We, uh, the staffing module uh, has been updated with the ability to perform inline edits within the timeline grid and details flat. Anything that's related to the staffing object itself can be edited, start, finish, allocation, et cetera. And you can also uh, indicate default allocation and start and finish dates when either adding or replacing a role or resource via drag and drop or reallocating a role or resource. So there's some new interactions there to help you um, perform those functions. Secondly, the resources workspace has been updated to include the ability to view and edit resources and roles in addition to teams. And the next item is that aggregated labor allocation and usage per period metrics are available for inclusion within project ideas and custom investment list views. Specifically, you'll be able to get totals and per period metrics for actuals, ETCs, total, total usage, allocation and hard allocation. They've all been updated to the investment level. They've been moved to the investment level, so they're uh, visible now for all of those investment types. And last but not least, Field level security continues to get updated every single release. And uh, in this release, we're adding the resource object attributes, which can be secured now using field level security. And of course, along with that comes the ability to uh, rename various attributes, as well as configure tooltips at the attribute level, providing that additional context for end users and tooltips will be covered in another session. So why is this important? So from the allocation timeline perspective, we continue we, we continue to focus on that so we can drive adoption. Users are really looking for those visual tools to manage uh, resource and investment allocations. And the ability to edit allocations in the timeline columns and specify default allocations and start and finish dates with that added visualization really helps users quickly review that from multiple perspectives and drive some decision making. And this workspace, the, the uh, staffing workspace specifically, continues to serve as a framework to further enhance the user experience with, with much more capabilities. So we're gonna continue to iterate in that area. Uh, managing resources and roles in, in the resource workspace, again, that's another capability that we're looking to drive adoption High priority customer request capabilities are included uh, in, in that regard. And with respect to the aggregated, aggregated labor allocation and usage metrics, <clears throat> users now have the ability for into uh, to look at key information at the investment level, project ID or customer investment type, without having to navigate directly to the underlying details. Field level security. So again, the <clears throat> adding the resource object into the list of items that are now uh, can be secured through field level security that came right out of the customer innovation program. And again, driving adoption is our focus there. And administrators are really looking for flexible tools to secure selected uh, details and provide, in, right, provide those end users with the right information and even company specific naming conventions at the right time. So what's changed? So with respect to the allocations timeline, and this is again in the staffing workspace, users now can edit allocation data right there in the timeline grid, you know, left of the, the timelines, and of course in the associated file. Now, attribute your editing is limited to those items associated with the staffing object. Those attributes that are associated with other objects are of going to be view only and they cannot be edited. Uh, for example, that lower left visual is the flyout. There is a visual treatment to help the user understand which 
elements can be edited and which things that are not, you know, they're not attributes of the staffing object. So they are then read only. We've introduced some new um, drag and drop actions for adding a resource, which was the add was the, you had that capability, I think with the very first release, you could basically add a resource directly to an investment but we've changed that now. You can see in the upper left there in the add motion, you can choose, um, you've got a lot of flexibility to leverage start and finish dates and the default allocation versus just in the prior release, you just add drag and drop and put it into the, into the uh, investment and you were done. But now you've got flexibility to actually select the resource start and finish date <clears throat> and the default allocation. Moving over to uh, into the center here, you've actually got the ability to replace, drag and drop, use a replace to replace a role with, or replace a role with a resource, or if you need, wanted to uh, replace a resource with a resource. In this function, everything on the screen here is kind of read only. So you're kind of confirming start and finish dates and, and the default allocation. Once you've done that, you could either edit in the grid like we were just talking about or perform a reallocate function. So you would simply perform the right click action on your row, select reallocate in the drop down menu. And here you have flexibility to alter the, the actual start uh, date or finish date and update the default allocation in one motion. With respect to the resources workspace, as you know, up until now, that area was dedicated to teams. We've been discussing uh, improving that area or adding more capability there in addition to teams. And we've done that in this release with the ability to uh, edit and view resources and roles. And of course, teams is there. And of course, to edit, you need to have the proper rights to view or edit, actually. You don't have users in, in this area. You do not have the ability to create new resources or delete resources. You would um, can, you would leverage classic to create new resources or you know inactivate uh, a resource. As you can see here on the right, there's uh, per period metrics that are available. Widgets are available. This is a common grid, so there's a lot of flexibility there in the resources and roles tab to present information. Uh, to the users. And we've got totals and per period metrics available for uh, availability, uh, resource remaining availability, resource total allocation are, are the um, attributes that are the TSVs that are there for both the resources and roles sections. And as you uh, create a save view within your resources area or roles area, those are independent views. They don't um, share across those particular uh, areas. Um, moving along inside this workspace still, the next area is roles, right? So we covered resources and now you can cover roles in this workspace and the same rules apply. Um, you need to have the appropriate permissions to uh, edit or view. Uh, you cannot delete, I'm sorry, you cannot create new roles in this area. We're actually looking at uh, perhaps the next release to include the ability to create new roles or even uh, add, create new users, uh, resources directly from these pages, but uh, that's coming. And again, the same uh, totals and appropriate metrics are available in the roles area as well. And just another note that, at, you know, as I mentioned, the, the saved views that you would create in, in resources do not transfer over into roles. They are independent. <clears throat> One of the things that you can see here in this vi visual here is I've got some totals. I'm kind of looking at per period metrics for the next two quarters and that security architect role becomes to go negative starting in Q2. So it's an interesting visual right away. You start to see uh, scarcity of your resources uh, in, in a view like this. Teams. So Teams is still there uh, in this workspace. <clears throat> the left-hand side is the 1602 experience, and the right-hand side is the 1601 experience. In particular, you would drill into a team. So you have your list of teams. 
And in the prior release, when you were trying to add resources, you could do it one at a time through the plus button, but you could also do it from um, add from a resource OBS. And then you'd get your listing of, of OBS and then uh, select that and it would bulk include all of those uh, people or resources from that OBS directly under the team. <clears throat> we changed the model in 1602, it's far more flexible. You basically have an add resources function that brings you to a grid. Uh, with, and again, you're now in the kind of the, the resource grid, right? You're, you're looking for resources and you have far more configurability and flexibility to uh, look at uh, by a certain type, certain expertise, certainly in OBS, but there's a lot more flexibility to um, select and identify resources and uh, include them on the team. With respect to the aggregated labor calculate allocation and usage metrics, um, these are now available at the higher level. You know they've been they've been uh, uplifted from what their parent is into the the investment, and so now across projects, ideas, or custom investment listings, you have immediate access to that information without having to drill into the details. So the appropriate metrics for actuals, ETC, total usage allocation, and hard allocation uh, are available for you, given the fact that they've now been moved to the investment object. And again, they're, they're visible there across all these individual projects or investments that you would have on your list. The key word here is after the update investment allocation and usage job is run. We'll talk a little bit more about than that. But that's probably a job that you want to be running on a regular basis so that at this level, your your metrics are up to date uh, as most up to date as possible. A little bit more information here on the job on the, from the um, as I mentioned, <clears throat> the existing attributes uh, noted below, they've been they've they've been renamed and moved to the investment object level. So an API alias has been set for each one of those for their use in the modern UX. And each one of these now does support the unit of measure like FDE hours and days that is um, prevalent throughout the modern UX. So you can see the lower left table has the attribute names and then you know, in what 16.01, what they used to be. Of course, allocation and hard allocation did not exist at that lower level, so we brought them up uh, to the and introduced them that new at the investment level. A little bit more about the job itself. Um, this job has been updated to process these new investment level uh, fields, and this job now also includes parameters. You can select a name, investment manager, OBS unit, or OBS unit filter mode. So in 1601, this job didn't have any parameters, and it only processed uh, it processed all active investments. And we've also updated the job name and description just so it uh, more accurately accurately reflects its purpose. And you can see those details comparing 1602 and 1601 both for the name and description. So it's good to keep an eye out for those particular elements of the job. Last but not least, a resource object has now been uh, introduced into the field level security capability. Um, as with other objects that are part of field level security, the administrator grants or revokes edit view access uh, at the group level. In addition, the administrators have that added flexibility to modify the out of the box custom or, or uh, yeah, out of the box or custom names. And then what's another new piece that's available in this release is uh, configuring tooltips for both out of the box and custom fields, providing that added context for the end users. And the tooltip capability will be covered in another release or another um, section but I'll show it here in the context of uh, resource management. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're gonna cover in the demo over the next few minutes. We'll definitely jump into the allocation time timeline and talk about the its edit capability. We'll talk about some of the new interactions there for indicating 
default allocation, start and finish dates when adding or replacing roles or resources. And then we'll look at how the resources workspace has been updated to help you manage your resources and roles. And then uh, we'll look at those aggregated labor uh, metrics and we'll touch on um, the resource object and field level security as well. All right, so let's get started on that. Okay, uh, we should be looking at an allocations timeline. I'm looking at it basically from, you know, February out until the end of the year. I've got my upper section looking at it grouped by investment. So I'll, I can expand that in one moment. In the bottom, I'm looking at kind of resource availability. Um, one other thing is that the this allocation timeline, given it that is we call it an associated object uh, grid, you see attributes across all these different um, object areas. So staffing is the main object for this particular area, and the user should have um, proper permissions to edit elements that are inside the staffing area. And then these all represent uh, objects, different types of investments, ideas, portfolio, products, those are custom investment types that are um, in this particular view and therefore you see them. There's also the resource object there with its various um, attributes. And then that value streams represents a custom investment type. And of course, there's totals that you have access to as well in this uh, view. All right, so the, the upper part is the investments. You can see their timeline, their kind of start and finish dates, and some um, allocation information in terms of F or hours is what I'm using here. And the lower portion is based on a filter of show me those that have primary role architect and um, Ray Fowler is their booking manager. So I've got several architects at the bottom. And on the right, I can see a histogram that shows their um, allocation according to their availability. So um, the green represents that they do have some more availability. They've only 112 hours out of 168 for Cheryl in the month of July. And then even, even um, allocation to um, usage is um, the gray and the red is indicating, in this case, Tom Morris is pretty much overwhelmed. He's over allocated based on his availability. All right, so let's expand the ARD uh, area here. The first thing we're gonna do is replace the, the architect role with an actual resource. So I can see here the, the investment start and finish dates, default allocation, and the actual allocation of this role for this investment. So in the prior release, you could take um, Adriana Ramos. I'm gonna grab her because she has clearly got some availability as an architect in this list here. I'm gonna take it and drop it directly on that role. Now before, this wasn't available in the last release. So we've, we've got the new capability to take, you know, via drag and drop, drag a resource right on top of the architect line. And when you release it, you now get a new experience here telling you you're doing a replace function. You're um, adding Adriana Ramos. And there is a start and finish date and a default allocation. Now, this is intentionally a read-only experience for you where you could say, oh, whoops, I don't want to do that. Or I can just do the replace action. We'll get an alert that tells us that was successful. You can see that Adriana was uh, inserted in the listing here, default allocation, and her total allocation in terms of hours is now represented across the bar. And from her... Uh, allocation and availability perspective, that has all been updated as well. I mentioned that this grid is editable. I can do it here from the grid directly, assuming if I have permission. And you can see I just updated her percentage. That brought things down a little bit. Her allocation, her hours were reduced, and also her hours were reduced in her histogram here as well. 
So another thing I can do is from the, I'm gonna highlight this row and use the open details window. And I can see the allocation area. I can see these resource start and finish are editable areas. I can also then um, say, I would like to, instead of Adrian, Adriana working all the way through August, I'm gonna maybe change that to the end of July. Give her another month break. So I can update that, close that out, and that'll further adjust. You can see that the August area has dropped off as far as allocations in the upper part, and her um, allocation had been decremented against her availability here in the month of August. So a lot more power here from an editing standpoint, whether it's in the grid or in the corresponding flyout. I have another action I can do. So let's say I want to readjust Adriana. I can do, there's a new right click and reallocate. So that is, I'm actually going to put her back. I'm going to say use the investment tape. So I have some smart filters here that allows me to, you know, okay, I don't want to use the investment data I do. And I'm going to put her at 75%. And then I just hit reallocate. So it's another way of adjusting some key metrics in a single right click action. You can see her August was updated accordingly here based on um, the action there. Now, another another one is new. I, I can do a, you know the add. So let's take a look at, um, in this same view, we're gonna look at Justin. And I'm gonna drag up to the the investment level here. And this is what we had before. You could do an add action, but all, all it did was drop the user and allocate them directly. So you can come up here and say, no, I don't want to use the end. I'm going to use the actual go back, you know, I'll go back to June 1st and we'll do a 50% allocation. And that will then go through the motion. We should get a message that says you updated and there he is right there. Justin is there and is his various um, allocation information has been updated. So you've got that um, replace a role with a resource or you could replace a resource with a resource uh, as well as the reallocate and the add all using those kind of drag and drop actions. Okay, the next thing we wanna talk about is um, going into the resource area and managing resources within the resource workspace. So first thing you'll see here is the resource tab, roles, and team. So there's definitely more capability inside the resource workspace area. Um, this grid is editable for the resources for which you have permission. Uh, you can see there's some field level security here that makes that kind of read only. Um, I can change the primary role if I wish. I can change that. I can change the manager. I'm just going to point um, and you know replace Ray Fowler with Peter. Um, and I can actually update the naming name, uh, the full name if I wish. But the other interesting part is I have now in at my disposal here, and I'll go into the pull down. I have availability, um, re remaining availability, and total allocation uh, for view right here in the resources workspace in terms of totals, right? My totals, as well as uh, per period metrics. So a lot of flexibility there. Um, I'm going to click on um, Cheryl, and I can bring that uh, details flyout open. And you can see there's a, a read-only section here, but it's got other information about the resource. She's got a lot of experience and some of the other fields that are uh, editable, and I actually have a tooltip that's helping me. Um, the next one is in jumping into roles. I, I have the ability to, uh, my view options here, again, I can bring in those um, metrics. So I've done that. And so one of the things I can tell right away is that like, for example, my architects just in total for this six month period 
it looks like they are a scarce, scarce resource. And in the columns area, the same thing. I can bring this kind of information into the role area to help me understand. Uh, I can see um, some tool tips are here to help me understand, um, you know, a little bit more about what that really means. It tells me they're out there, they're at least staffed to one or more investment. Now, Teams has um, this was here in the prior release. However, um, one thing we've done now is once you're in a team, I'll just close that out. I can select add resources. And so this allows me to, to bring in, um, instead of using simply an OBS, I can come in, I can grab anybody using any number of filter criteria. For example, um, I'm going to look at experience and I'm going to say uh, Java. And that'll bring back those individuals that um, meet that requirement. I'm going to grab Tom Morris and add him to the team. And you can see here, Tom's percent allocation to this team is 0%. So that's on default if he's already out, if a, a person or a resource is already allocated to another team. So I can open this flyout, and I can see he's digital team 100% and um, uh, zero on this team. So if I really want to have Tom on this team, I can edit his allocations right here. Now you notice that I it went over; it's turned red, indicating, "Hey, you're over allocated." So, but I do have the information right here to adjust it. So I can um, give him 50% allocation on either of these teams. So this is the the AI team that we're checking out now, and the digital team is another team that Tom is a member of. Okay, so that is the updates here for managing roles, uh, resources, roles, and teams. All right, the next capability we wanted to talk about is our aggregated labor allocation and usage per period metrics. So that'll take us up to the investment, uh, the project area and a grid view. You'll notice that I've got included as totals here, allocation, hard allocation, ETC, actuals, and total usage. So these are the, uh, and, and there's also per period metrics. So I'll go into my per period metrics. There's many things that I can do here, obviously at this particular level, but these are the new ones that have been um, uplifted to the investment object and available at this level. Let me do that. The total areas. So I can see a really good information just at this level without having to, to drill into the details. Now, this information here, uh, in as far as these totals and per period metrics, these are read only attributes, right? This is being aggregated from the underlying uh, investments. So I'll click my details fly out and I can start to see uh, a lot of good information here for that particular investment. So let's go to drill into a particular uh, investment. We're gonna go to the staff module. I'm gonna set the hard allocation for this, the black Blackhawk team, just to, let's book these guys. Let's uh, confirm their allocation for the whole year. We just got a, a mixed booking status just came in right there. And then I'm going to add a resource. I add Cheryl. And you'll notice that I'm getting in uh, some more information uh, from total allocation, remaining allocation, just to help me understand you know, how, how much availability does Cheryl have even when I'm looking to staff. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, book Cheryl for the 696 for the whole uh, period as well. So I've done that there. Now you'll notice that um, this is the uh, GDPR. There's roughly uh, 4,100 hours of allocation and roughly 41 hours of hard allocation. 
So if I go back back to my project list and I focus here on GDPR, um, I'm a little bit off, right? The end, the hard allocation has not even, it's not updated. Well, that's because I need to run this job, the updated update investment allocation and uses job. So this was renamed. Um, it's also now has some parameters, so I could further uh, dr drill in on well, what investments or what OBS do I want to update. Now, typically this would be scheduled. Obviously for today's um, conversation here, I'm just going to show you real time, uh, run the job, and it does run fairly quickly, so it's already completed. So I can come back to my investment list, and I just want to look at um, the GDPR, and, you know, any actuals that uh, were behind the scenes that hadn't been aggregated up will also be picked up, right? All of these metrics are going to be picked up. So I will hit refresh, and I should see an uptick here on GDPR. Um, Right there, there's some hard allocations that picked up as well as some allocations. So good. All right, the next piece I want to talk about is the resource object and field level security. So I'm going to go into administration, attributes, and I've got a pre filter here on resource as an object. Another thing that's interesting is this list begins to grow. Um, with every release, the number of objects that are here, uh, you know, they just continue to grow. So you've got a lot of flexibility now. Status report, I'll just find that one. That's another one that was just updated in, in this release, and that'll be covered in another session. So I've got my resource. Standard things apply. I've got my label, like label column I can bring in if I wish to further, um, you know, I want to rename it. I've also got my tool tips here. That's new for this release. Again, that's gonna be, be covered in another um, session. Same thing for securing. Looks like these two right here, date of hire and date of termination have been secured and suppressed from the application altogether, right? There's no edit or view access groups available. And there's a couple others here related to experience and resource type that have been set as view only. So any member of this is actually the name of the group, right? Any member of this group uh, would only have um, view access to these attributes. So let's take a look at that in action. I'll just go back into the resources area where we were a moment ago. And um, let's see. Boop, 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 boom. Yep, you can see if my um, filters are here. I had this filtered on Java, so I'm going to take away the Java and bring back a broader list, 115 users. 110 of those are actually labor resources because I'm using my filter here. But one thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, we have the tooltip icon. You can see that uh, hovering on that gives you the information you're looking for. Uh, the shield, the field level security shield, this one tells me that this is a read-only uh, bit of information. If I hit the flyout, I get some more information. I'll close the widgets to get some more page. So the experience, not only is there a, a tooltip here, but there's the FLS, and you can see the read-only treatment associated with that and another tooltip for manager. Um, when I, If I hit configure here, uh, just for added uh, information for you, the uh, you can see the, the columns that are, or, sorry, the attributes that are available to me also include the shield icon indicating um, field level security, resource type, and experience, both of which are included already in the flyout. All right, so that wraps up the, the elements of the demonstration. This concludes the staffing update section. I want to thank you for your time and attention, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.